Hello everyone, welcome back. Everybody on Facebook and YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Golf Cart Garage. I am your host, Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We're gonna talk about some golf carts today, believe it or not. Uh, maybe even learn something. Maybe even save you some money. You know, if you have golf cart issues, they're either myself or somebody in the room may, may know the answer or may have some kind of information that can help you out. So we will, let me check Facebook. We'll uh, see if we can help some people today. Gene Hansen on Facebook. What's going on, Gene Hansen? 55 degrees in Michigan. Hello, Kevin. What's going on, Kevin, on Facebook? 56, cloudy, windy, Indiana. Uh, Larry Consley, overcast and uh, back on YouTube, overcast in southern Indiana. Big Mike, what's up? GCG 57 here in northwest Indiana, up in the crane at Cleveland Cliffs Steel Mill. Is that what you do, Mike? You're a crane operator? I knew you worked at a mill. So are you a crane operator? Is that what you do? That's cool. Uh, Helpless Garage, hello everyone. Beautiful 49 degrees in Cabot. Prayers for the folks in Baltimore. Uh, I haven't been on the internet. I heard something, I was, the TV was going, they said something about a bridge collapse. Is that what's going on, Helpless? Is that what you're talking about? The bridge, there was a, I heard something about a bridge collapse. Uh, Sir Walter, 61, North Carolina. Greg Elliott, rainy in Bristol, Virginia today. Rich Eastman, 48 and overcast in the Chesapeake Bay, eastern shore of Virginia. No cargo ships will be passing here for a while after what happened in Baltimore. Okay, that's what I was asking about there. Is, is that what it is? Kurt, being patient, waiting on our favorite mechanic. Howdy, Tim. What's going on, Kurt? Thank you, sir. Mike Irwin, 62 and overcast in southwestern Indiana. Jeffrey, what's going on, Jeffrey? 36 in the Poconos. It's kind of cool here today. Big Mike says, yeah, crane operator, mobile equipment operator. Joe Foster, good day, Tim. What's going on, Joe Foster? Cargo ship hit and dropped the bridge in less than 34 seconds. Okay, that's what I've heard, I, but I haven't been able to, I've been working, I haven't been able to look at the internet for the last couple of hours, but yeah, that's crazy. Ship hit the bridge, dang. That is, that is bad. Oh, you see, I got, see who I got with me today, huh? You see him? Dino Man. <laughs> uh, Rock Dog, hello everyone. I made it by for a few. Athens overcast expecting rain. What's going on, Rock? I got some, uh, got some let's see pictures we'll talk about later on. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook if you haven't already. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also follow us on other platforms. They're right here. Uh, Insta uh, Instagram and TikTok. I'm getting notifications on my phone now about uh, the bridge collapse. Okay. This is Tuesday, the 26th. Uh, we come here every Tuesday, Tim Taco Tuesday. So if you haven't subscribed or, or, and got that all figured out, just remember that. I think that Dino wants to go for a ride. He always, uh, Kurt, he always wants to go for a ride, always. He would ride in there, well, he has for years. He's ridden in there with me See, my, my last property before we got this property that I lived on, it was lots of acreage, but like smooth and uh, terrain like at a golf course, you know, basically. And the trail system through the woods was nice. It was a really nice manicured trail system that I did for myself. I used it for my golf cart shop to test all my golf cars on. So I, I wish I knew how much golf cart time he has. I guarantee you he has more golf cart time than hmm, I, almost any dog probably because we've had him since he was new. Uh, Bruce, hi all from Westfield, Wisconsin. What's going on, Bruce? Clay Mathis, always glad when it's golf cart garage time. Hey, Clay, how's it going? I appreciate that. All right. Got Debbie over here on Facebook. What's going on, Debbie? 
uh, she has a golf cart question. 36 volt, 99, easy go freedom. All right. Sometimes reverse does not go. Replaced switch. Two cord lugs melted off. Even after switch replacement, uh, a full charge on the batteries, 37 volts on meter after charge, start out fine, then after driving 30 to 40 minutes, drops to a crawl with one person. Drops to a, uh, indicator shows half, battery indicator drops from full to half charge in 30 minutes, and it's only a mile with slight inclines on pavement. Reverse switch was hot to the touch, could not keep hand on it, and the smell of hot electric was so replaced. What else could be wrong? Well, your, your battery indicator, Debbie, has nothing to do with your reverse switch, okay? So you gotta figure that, part of, that, that problem out too. Your battery indicator is hooked to your battery pack directly. So if your battery indicator is falling to half, then you got a battery that's dropping out. Okay, so you're going to have to find that, and the, the easiest way to find that first, we'll worry about your forward and reverse switch later, but yeah, replacing it if it was getting that hot, that, that, that was the thing to do for sure. But uh, it sounds to me, first we need to figure out which battery you have dropping out. Like what, how old are your batteries is what I would want to know, because it's a, uh, that's exactly what you're describing. You're describing two, two different issues actually, forward and reverse switch issues and battery dropping out issue. So we need to, you need to get a voltmeter. Don't worry about your battery energy gauge and, and check your battery voltage, each one of them. You don't have to disconnect any wires to do this. Do this when the car fails. When that, when that battery energy gauge goes down to halfway, then, then go through and check your batteries. And see, what you're looking for is one battery that's way less than the others, than the other five. All right. Oh yeah, another episode. Hey, Galactic Technologies, going on. Story, sent you a picture of the VW bus, top half on a golf cart frame. Just did it yesterday. I haven't checked t today, Jeffrey, but I'll, I'll check it out. Keith, what's going on, Keith? Thank you for joining us, Keith. We are live, if I haven't said that already. <laughs> we are live right now. Uh, I know Dino Man doesn't look like he's live, but he is. I can assure you, he is perfectly fine. This is just his power nap time every day during, you know, which this is around lunchtime. Well, lunchtime just happens to be his power nap schedule. So he takes a power nap through lunch. Oh, probably three hours, something like that. So he's got a couple of more hours to go before he wakes up. And then he's, he's a regular dog, but he's got to get his power nap in every day. After sleeping all night, too, yeah. Keith from Palmetto, Florida, next week be home in Nashville. Galactic Technologies, everything going great. Good, good to hear. Uh, Jeffrey, my father-in-law is doing good. He's, uh, he's getting around. He is still getting around. He's, he's not in a wheelchair. He, he has a cane that he walks around with, but he's able to take care of himself. He's able to get up and, and get around, you know, slowly and, and carefully, but he's doing really good. Thank you for asking. Is Tim growing his hunting beard for the spring hunting season? <laughs> yeah, I just, you never know what I'm going to look like. I can cut all my hair off. I got long hair one day and I got short hair the next day. I got a beard one day and clean shaven the next day. Uh, you never know about me. I change it up. Spring turkey season soon can't wait you know i actually have turkeys <clears throat> big mike in my neighborhood i've got wild turkey here in my neighbor i saw one just the other day and uh and someone told me uh we had a contractor over here one day doing some work and he told me that before this neighborhood went in that people this was a big turkey uh hunting place and uh, i said well y'all didn't kill them all because we still got them bill b what's going on bill b we have Yamaha G22 2005. If we flip the tow run switch tow back and forth to run, solenoid will engage. Step on the pedal and starts to run and stops. Solenoid will not energize again. Okay, well, hmm, uh, 
we do the toe switch as above. It won't energize again until you do the toe switch as above. Well, think about it like this. What you're doing is you're turning the controller on and off when you, when you do that, that uh, toe switch back and forth. Now, I don't know for 100% sure what your problem, what, what your issue is going to be, but I can tell you this, that controller in your cart is in the solenoid activation circuit. It's part of the solenoid activation circuit. So if your solenoid is acting up and all you do is power on and power off the controller, you're basically booting it and, and unbooting it and then booting it back up again and rebooting it over and over and over again. And then your solenoid starts working correctly, I'm suspicious that you may have a controller issue, is what I'm saying. Rob Cedar, Facebook is playing last week's episode. What do you mean there, Rob? Let me go over here and look and see what you're talking about. Replace the switch. Debbie says she replaced the switch. Yes, I understand you've replaced the forward and reverse switch, Debbie, but it sounds like you've got a battery going out on you. So I wanted to see that. Larry LaCucaracha. What's going on, Larry LaCucaracha? <laughs> we think it is the controller. Yes, I do too, Bill B. I, I think so. I just checked, Rob. Facebook is not playing uh, 192. It may it may be saying 192, but it is definitely not. Uh, so we'll we'll get that fixed if that's what's going on. Two, we're chasing cars. I guess their eggs just hatched. Oh, okay, talking about turkeys. We have hundreds of the suckers turkeys. Bill B. Ouch! I was afraid you would say that. Thanks, my friend, for all you do. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you for joining us. Thank you uh, for your support of myself and the channel. I really appreciate it. We better get started on the regular questions or we will run long today because I do have some pictures. I've got some pictures from, uh, uh, just in case you guys are in the room, uh, William Rizzo, I got a picture you put in, and uh, Chris Bukowski, uh, I'm going to feature a picture that you sent too. You, for some reason, Rob, you must not be watching the live broadcast. If you're seeing a green hoodie talking about batteries, if you're seeing me in a green hoodie, you, for some reason you're not watching live. I mean, I'm, I can flip over here to Facebook and I see uh, myself right now. You need to back out of that and somehow look for the live broadcast. Joe Foster, 2005 TXT 36. What is the function of the capacitor in the PowerWise charger. Mine runs and drops out at 8 to 10 on the meter. Well, there's only about four items inside that charger for that car. And I have, I have only had to, over the years, I have had to replace that, the EasyGo circuit board. I've had to replace that the circuit board in there. That's the most common thing I've had to replace. The next most common thing that I've had to replace in that EasyGo PowerWise charger is the diode assembly, or the diodes themselves. Depending on how old that charger is, it may have a, a, a plate with two diodes mounted to this plate, or they may be individual diodes. Anyway, I've had to replace those. The, the thing that I've had to replace the least would be the transformer. If the transformer goes, it's just better to get a new charger. And the capacitor. Now, I have had to replace a capacitor. Uh, but I would eliminate everything else first. It would be, it would be odd if it's the capacitor, Joe. Obviously a capacitor, what a capacitor does is it does hold a little bit of voltage, you know, in, internally. It holds it you know, for, a, for a time. Now on a golf cart, when a capacitor is bad on a, on a power wise charger, I'm trying to think of what it would do. See on a, when the diodes are bad on an on a easy go power wise charger, Sometimes you plug it into the golf cart and the needle will click, it'll go backwards. It'll go backwards and you know, like it's, uh, it's got an you know, internal fault. You've you got to unplug it real quick. Uh, when the uh, circuit board is bad, you know, or the, it's usually, when the circuit board is bad, it's usually just the relay. See, the relay is mounted to the circuit board. That's why you got to ch change the whole circuit board. Club car chargers, the relay is separate from the circuit board, which makes it a, a, 
a very a less expensive repair because you only have to only have to replace the relay when the relay stops working. So I don't know if I ever answered your, your question there, Joe. I, I guess I didn't. What's the function of the capacitor? Well, it's to hold a certain amount of voltage, you know, and it is, is what the capacitor does. But I don't really remember what a charger does when it has a uh, bad capacitor. I don't remember the symptoms that a charger goes through with a bad capacitor. Rob Cedars found it. He got it working. Joseph said, hello, Tim. I have an easy-go charger. Do you know anyone can repair? Is it a, is it a trans, uh, Joseph Simmons, is it a big, heavy, black transformer charger? If so, then yes, you can have it repaired. If it is not, if it's one of the small, lightweight, solid state chargers, you're going to, most people used to call those boat anchors, basically, because when they break, there was no, nothing you could do. But there is companies now that will rebuild those. So which one do you have there, Joseph? Okay, Bart Gillum, 51, clear in Northern California. What's going on, Bart Gillum? Is it a bad idea to tow a lawn cart with electric cart? No, not at all. I've got one. I've got the, the real small ones. The, the perfect uh, tow cart for a golf cart, it's like that one. They used to give them away when you would buy a lawnmower. Like if you was, went to Home Depot and you'd buy a brand new lawnmower, they would give you this like $150 pull cart for your lawn, they'd give them away for free. Well, those are lightweight, they're very light duty. You know, you're not gonna be hauling, uh, um, you probably wouldn't be hauling things like rocks or bricks in, in one of those. They're, they're a little bit too light duty for that. But the fact that they're so light duty is that they're easy to pull. So yeah, that's, no, it's, it's not a bad idea. You can do that, if, as long as it's a small one, is what I'm saying. They have them at Tractor Supply, they have them at Home Depot. I. I wish I knew how many miles was on mine. I, I've got one myself. Uh, Jeffrey, are we going to be on Tuesday with Easter this weekend? I don't know. I haven't thought about that. I'll have to look at that, Jeffrey. I think we'll be on Tuesday. Yeah, I think we'll be on Tuesday. Even though it shows 100% and keeps charging. Why does it go to balance? Well, all of that is set, Kurt, in the, in the charger itself. So if it's doing that, it's, it thinks it needs to. And it thinks it needs to by, some, by something your batteries are doing while it's charging. So, I mean, it's perfectly fine. I wouldn't, those are kind of like set it and forget it kind of deals, those chargers. They're, you know, smart chargers, so they do what needs to be done based on the information that they're getting from the pack itself. As long as you've got all the parameters set right on your Summit 2, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Do you, did you go, did you put the app on your phone, Kurt, and go through and check everything? Because you literally pick your battery pack. You know, if you've got six Trojan T105s, that's in the menu to pick. You have six Trojan T105s you know, whatever you have, whatever kind of batteries in there. You, you go through and you answer some questions about your battery pack, you know, when you first set up the charger itself using the app. Okay, you did all that. Okay, cool. Then if you got, if you did all that, then it's, then it's good to go. Uh, if you want to take a voltmeter reading on your pack while it's charging or while it's doing some of that stuff and and actually that will actually tell you exactly what's happening i mean that's what i want to do if it, if it was doing some weird stuff when it started doing something you didn't understand put a voltmeter on the pack and watch the volts and see what's going on dmax what's going on dmax how's everyone doing i just got a new lithium battery oh cool that's in your personal cart dmax you, you got a new lithium let me check facebook yeah, we're good over there. All right, let me, let me get to let me get to number one here. That's cool, Dmax. That's what everybody wants. <laughs> we'll all get there one day. Even myself, I don't have one yet for my personal cart. I'm I'm putting it in that in the camo cart behind me. Is it needs a battery job? 
and I uh, haven't pulled the trigger yet. Number one is from Rich. I have an EasyGo golf cart charger that was made in 1997 on charger tag. The charger is not charging the battery, i.e. I tested the cord eg exiting the charger and using a volt tester there is no current leaving the charger to the golf cart. Okay, well that's not how you do that right there, Rich. Well, uh, let's let's uh let's start that let's answer that part first there's no voltage leaving charge see on that particular charger 1997 easy go power wise it's the same charger that i was just talking about earlier that is a dc activated charger not ac activated and what i mean by that when you plug it into the wall that's the ac all right it doesn't activate just off of ac you can leave that thing plugged into the wall all the time and it does not come on that charger does not come on until you plug the plug into the golf cart all right, and the, that DC voltage turns the relay on inside the charger, and then it starts charging. It's a DC activated charger. All right, and if your batteries are too low, that won't even work. So, question, if my batteries were indeed dead, and I plugged, it, plugged in the charger to the charging port of my cart, would the charger still show a current via volt that cord in the cord that plugs into the cart? or would the charger automatically not send a current through the plug-in cord if the batteries were dead? Thank you for your time. <laughs> that was kind of a complicated way of asking that question, but yeah, that, I think I answered it. Yeah, that, that, it, would, it would show nothing coming out. You know, that's what it would show. I think I got that. Jeffrey, you said the big B easy go big black chargers are repairable, or the little ones, Jeff's, are rebuildable and are repairable are the little ones are rebuildable yes that's that's what i said jeff the you know the little ones flight systems i don't know if you use flight systems jeffrey flight systems industrial products it's f s i p well the last time i checked they would rebuild the small ones you could you could send those off and get those rebuilt just like controllers uh Dip my toes and the water went with a lit a lifetime 48 60 amp hour lithium battery got it for 880 on amazon well that's uh, that's something i want you to keep me posted about you know you know where we're at we're here every tuesday and i want to know how that works out for that kind of money uh that's that's one of those kind of money things that sounds a little bit too good to be true but i'm willing to i'm willing to uh listen to your story and i'm sure everybody's in here is willing to listen to your story at that price so please keep us updated dmax that's a very important thing you're doing there okay garland talent okay he's going to tell what a bad capacitor will do on a power wise all right cool because that's what i want to know because I, I don't remember a bad capacitor on a PowerWise charger will read a low amperage, one to four amp. Replaced many of them. Enjoy your show. I'm in a ratio. Is that Arkansas? Cool. Garland's golf cart service. All right, cool, Garland. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, I wasn't sure what the, the symptom would be on a PowerWise of a bad capacitor. I know I have replaced them before, but I just couldn't remember what the symptom was. So thank you. DMAX doing some research for the rest of us. Yeah, I mean, if that works out, I mean, come on. That's going to be big news if that works out. 880 bucks. That's the lowest price I've heard so far. Uh, controller for me and I highly recommend them everything went smooth and fast galactic technologies yes I've, that's who I used to use when I when my shop was active uh, for all my controllers I would I would anytime I had a bad controller I'd put it in a box and when I got like 10 12 of them in a box I'd send the whole box to flight systems and they would send them all back rebuilt if they were rebuildable and a lot of times controllers aren't rebuildable and they'll send it back to you and say this is not a rebuildable core but uh, more times than not, they were, they were rebuildable. And I always had good experience with flight systems. 
Joseph Simmons, hello Tim, this is Joseph again. I have a Delta Q 48. All right, let me back up, Joseph, and see what we were talking about. Oh, okay, Delta Q. Well, that's going to be, that's not going to be a big heavy transformer charger. That's going to be a, a solid state charger. Do, I would still check with flight systems. Tell them what you have. Flight systems industrial products. They go by FSIP. Call somebody there, get on the tech line or whatever you can do there. See if they will rebuild Delta Q chargers. Fish, what's going on, fish? I have a club car pressing a two inch spindle lift, 12 inch wheels, 20s. My ride on the course is rough. Yeah, I bet it is with, with uh, 12 inch rims when 20s. If I went to an A arm, would it give me a better ride on the course? It might, but the best thing you could probably do, Fish, would be get rid of those 12s. Go with 8s and 20s, or even 10s and 20s. That would, that would help your ride the most. You get your name up. I got things popping up on my screen off the snowmobile. Who is that? D-Max? Or it's D, you said B-Max there, Jeff. William Rizzo, hello, Tim, and good people from the Florida. Hey, William, I got, I'm going to feature your picture today, William. I don't know if you were here earlier when I said it. I, I got one of the pictures you sent me, yours and one other person, uh, Chris Bukowski. I'm going to uh, show his picture of golf carts that he had. Thanks, Tim. You're the best. Thank you, Fish. Okay. Harry Fike on Facebook. I have repaired at least four chargers with Amazon rebuild kits. No complaints yet. Some over a year ago. Okay, so they have Am they have Amazon rebuild kits. You you're talking about for uh, Harry? You talking about heavy transformer chargers or solid state chargers? The small light solid state chargers that don't have the big heavy transformer. What, what kind of chargers do they have uh, on Amazon? Or what repair kits are you talking about for what type of charger? No, just got here. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to feature that, uh, that that cart you said. All right. I better get on to number two from Abby. We recently put new batteries in our golf cart. However, it will not charge. It is, is it possible we did it not connect the wires correctly? Well, yeah, it's possible. It worked just fine before we replaced the batteries. Oh, yeah, that's very possible. There's no way I can answer that question. Uh, I need to know which cart because I can I can even tell you some of the most common things that people do when they when they do their own battery job. The most common mistakes they make. Well, the first most common mistake they make is they don't take pictures beforehand. So that this the this is just an example of, of how important it is to take pictures beforehand. Uh, like on a club car, sometimes they on a club car DS. One of the most common things I've seen over and over again is they forget to hook up that red wire. On the, on the first battery positive post. They forget that that wire falls down during the battery job and they don't remember that it, that it had a red wire on that first post. They forget to hook that up and so therefore the cart won't charge. Uh, easy goes, the, the most common thing I see is they get the last two connections backwards. In other words, the B plus wire that goes to the solenoid, they put it on the negative post and then they, they put the negative, the uh, the other wire onto the B plus. They get that backwards. So it just depends on which car and I might be able to give you a hint of, of what happened during the battery job. Tom Dunlap, I'm restoring a 98 DS. It's the added expense of radial tires, standard tires. It is the added expense of radial tires, standard tires 23. Uh, it, I, it's not going to make that much difference in a vehicle of the speeds that we're talking about. If we're still talking about golf cart speed, the fact that it's radial is not the biggest thing that you need to worry about. The fact that it is, uh, you, you know, to adjust your ride, like I was telling, uh, like I was talking to Fish earlier. You, if you're going to be on asphalt, you can get away with those, t with those tall rims and the low profile tires. Usually you can get away with that. But that's not going to be any good if you hit any bumps because they're not going to take bumps very well. Golf cart suspension is not the greatest, uh, most advanced technology in the world. Uh, it's, it's very antiquated, you know, the golf, golf cart expansion, the suspension, I mean. So the only thing you can do is adjust tires. But I wouldn't 
be worried about radial versus standard, if that's what you're asking me. Either one would be fine for these speeds. I take pics on everything I do. Great reference and go back and make sure everything is hooked up, Bruce. That's correct, Bruce. Everybody's got a, uh, a camera, you know. You can't tell me that you don't have access to a camera nowadays. Harry Fike says that was for transformer chargers. Okay, cool. Yeah, those are definitely repairable. Uh, 2008, Mark Fulsom, what's going on? Mark on Facebook, 2018 club car president, 48 vote. Good or any issues with this mile? 18, no, that's good, that's a good car. Yeah, club car president, you know, started in 2004, was the first year. That is actually when I worked for club car in 2004. So, and I was the warranty guy. So you can imagine, you know, anytime there's the first year of something, that's when I decided to go to work for club car and I found out that the precedents are rolling off the assembly line the very first year. So you can imagine how much warranty stuff or how busy I was for the, you know, the first year of, of working there. So by 2018, yeah, they got, the, they got a lot of bugs worked out by then. They actually had the bugs worked out of the precedent probably by, oh, probably by 2006 or 2007, something like that. It takes a, sometimes it takes a couple of years to get the bugs worked out of a new, of a new release. But no, that's that's far from being new. So that's good. That's, nothing wrong with that at all. <clears throat> William Rizzo, bias ply are a little rough until they warm up a little bit. All right, so they get softer as they, as they warm up. I think the worst battery change I've ever seen, the picture you had up of mine, six 12 volts with a lot of different body wires. Yeah, those are, yeah, those are difficult. Those gym cars, if that's what you're talking about, Jeffrey, those gym cars, that's the most difficult battery change ever because I've, I've done several of those and didn't look forward to it at all. Very hard to get to. Batteries weigh a ton because they're the big 12s. Anyway. D-Max, Tim does the 97 Club Car Villager 6 come with a beefier forward and reverse lever and solenoid. Not that I know of, uh, D-Max. Villager 6, it probably should, so I didn't get a lot of, of uh, Villager 6s. I don't even know if I, if I worked on a 6 passenger one or not. But just a regular Villager, I'm, I'm almost positive, does not. Now, uh, a Villager 6, it would probably be a good idea if it didn't. If, it's, if we're talking about a series, and we probably are, it's 97, probably talking about a series wound uh, car. So it, if it doesn't have one, it would probably be a good idea if you're gonna put six people on it. Because it's gonna have, a, that car's gonna pull a little more amps when, you, when it's loaded than a regular golf cart, if it's got the same electrical system. <clears throat> Number three. From Daniel, I have new batteries in my five-year-old car. My batteries are fully charged. When I start driving, the charge gauge shows a full charge, but after a minute or two, the gauge shows only half a charge. What's going on? Please help me if you can. Thank you. Well, like I was saying earlier, those battery energy gauges, first of all, I know I've said this before, I don't like them. I don't, I don't like them to pay attention to those battery energy gauges, unless you get the kind that actually shows the voltage. And, they, and we have that at Golf Cart Garage, by the way. We have battery energy gauges that actually show the voltage, not the percentage. I don't like the percentage stuff. But anyway, either way, those hook up to your batteries, and what makes that reading change is a change in voltage. So if you're at full, and all of a sudden it's down to half, it's, it, it's either broke, the, the gauge itself is either malfunctioning, or there was actually a huge change in voltage. And I know you said you had new batteries. Well, that's the time to eliminate that as a, as a possibility. Take your voltmeter, go on each individual battery, and make sure that you don't have one that dropped out on you. Because uh, that would cause that voltage uh, meter to do that if you had a battery that dropped out. And what I mean by that is one battery a lot lower than the rest. No problems with the gems. The Ford Think made by Ford, the yellow picture I sent you. Oh, okay. Mark Fulsom, you a hell of a guy, Tim. Well, thank you, Mark. <laughs> thank you for coming here. Thank you for saying that, too. <clears throat> Works from a 
They get works. Okay. What is that? Number three is where I'm at or where am I at? That was Daniel was number three. Okay, so I'm number four now. This is from Mike. 36 volt, 99, easy go freedom. Sometimes reverse does not go. Full charge on the batteries is 37 volts on the meter. Starts out fine after driving 30, 40 minutes it drops to a crawl with one person. With two, it stops in a light flash and clicking. Battery indicator shows half. Battery indicator drops from full to half charge in that 30 minutes. Okay, forward and reverse switch hot to the touch. Can't keep hand on it and the smell of electric. That sounds like a question I answered with the girl earlier in the live. Uh, but my answer is still the same. If you're, the, those voltmeters or those battery energy gauges are working from voltage, that's how they're reading, from voltage of your entire battery pack. So at failure, go through and find out what's going on there to see if it's, if it's a faulty gauge or if you actually are dropping from full to half. It, it'll show up. It's going to show up on one of your batteries because it's not going to be on all of them. It's going to be on one of them. Number five. Oh, I remember this question. This is from Mel. What can you say about reverse osmosis water versus distilled water for golf cart batteries? Now that's a good question. So I had to, I actually looked this up because I, I didn't know. Because my first, my first question to, the, to answer that, I, a lot of times I have to ask a question before I can answer, is does reverse mars does reverse osmosis water have minerals? Because that's the whole purpose of distilled water is the lack of minerals. So this is what it says on the internet. That reverse osmosis water can be used in batteries in emergency situation only. It says emergency. The, the DTS, which stands for total dissolved solids, has to be less than five parts per million. And only if distilled water is not available should you do this. Reverse osmosis can damage the battery. Now that's the internet talking because I've never had that question before. So I like it. I like it sometimes when somebody asks me a, a neat question that I've never heard before. And I had not had a, I'd never, no one's ever asked me about reverse osmosis water before. So that's why I had to look that one up. So that's interesting. You're not supposed to use it, is what, is what I found on the internet. Number six. <clears throat> Jeffrey says, we're kind of the same, but me with gas, you spit out answers on the electric carts like I do with gas. Thank you. Tim, you need to wear a t-shirt that says, don't trust battery gauges, or is the <laughs> still annoyed click? <laughs> That's a good idea. I probably do. It needs to say, does the solenoid click? I wonder if I could, uh, I could, uh, hmm. Or, or I could add it, like have this, it would say golf cart garage on my hat, but under it, it would say, does the solenoid click? That'd be a cool hat. All right, number six. This is from Godfrey. My golf cart isn't charging. I've watched your videos and I'm about to start the process of charging them enough to see if my charger will, will charge them. That's good, that's exactly right. My question is, in the event that I need batteries, do you buy them all or one at a time? Uh, question two, would it be better to invest in lithium? I have a 48 volt EasyGo TXT. Well, it's always better, we'll answer that part first. It's always better to invest in lithium, if you can. You know, the only, like we've talked about, the only downside is cost, and DMAX is gonna do some research for us on that. He's about to do some research where cost is not an issue. So if that research comes back good, and we can't even say anything bad about cost. Harry Fike, I'd, I would buy one that says, does the solenoid click? <laughs> I know I say that a lot. 
And that's just the way that I look at the electrical system. The reason I say that a lot is because I've said it, I've explained it, I don't know. The way that I look at the electrical system, that's half of the electrical system. If the solenoid's clicking, then I know the front half of the electrical system's good. I don't gotta waste my time. It's only on the rear half. Did you check your batteries for your, check your batteries for your hat? Did you check your batteries for your hat? What do you mean there, Jeff? Helpless, I'm considering buying a distiller from Amazon to make my own water will pay for itself in no time. Really? I guess it would. I, I buy, I still buy the gallons, you know, at the grocery store of, of distilled water. That's, that's where I get it from. But yeah, if I make my own, hmm, I do go through, I go through quite a bit when I have a couple of, see right now I don't have an electric golf cart running though, so I'm not using any right now. But when I have a couple of electric golf cars running, I, I go through distilled water a pretty good bit. So that'd be an idea. I didn't know they had that at Amazon, but I guess I should have because they have everything uh, pretty much. Uh, number six, there was another part of that question, wasn't it? I said it's always better to invest in lithium. It says, uh, do you buy them all or do you just do one at a time? In fact, that was the, the title of this episode. You can do one at a time on a lead acid pack and it will fix your issue that day and, it, and you can, you'll drive off in your golf cart with your issue fixed that day. But depending on how old your batteries are, there's going to be another one that's going to fail little, little ways down the road or, you know, time wise, maybe, maybe next month, it could be six months, could be another year, you'll have another one fail and then you're going to replace that one and then let, you'll have a whole mismatched year battery pack. So the answer is if your battery pack is three years old or more, then replace them all. You'll be you'll be better off. William says, "Go lithium. Water is for drinking. Making your own distilled water. Just use the water from a dehumidifier." Well, that's true, because the the distilled process is like a, it's like how rain happens. You know, like you put a water like you got water boiling, and the steam goes up and collects on this. Uh, metal surface up here and it collects and gets all moist that water that comes off of there would be considered distilled water oh you should have on your hat did you check your batteries yeah that's true yeah that that would that would make sense too yeah my, well my voice i think puts him to sleep because my wife and i have have talked about that that's when he's at his most relaxed positions is when my wife and I are having a conversation because he just he says okay they, they got it all under control they're taking care of any problems so I don't have to I don't have to protect the house they're they're discussing it and they're you know they're going to take care of everything that's when he's the most relaxed but so yeah he's he's fine just checking on Facebook a still alcohol yeah Number seven, I collect the water from my central air conditioner. I get about 10 gallons a day. Yeah, they do make some water, that's for sure. <laughs> Kurt, yeah, you're probably right. He probably is wondering who I'm talking to. Number seven is from Pierre. I would like to know if the speed of my club car 91 could be augmented. If yes, how? Sure it can. Uh, I'd have to know if your 91 is a resistor system or what it is, because if it's a resistor system in 91, somewhere between 91 and 93 is when club cars started putting controllers in their cars, including 36 volt cars. There's actually a such thing as a club car DS 36 volt controller car, which a lot of people didn't even know that. Uh, but if that's the case, if you got one of those, then sure, you could, it would, uh, you could put a higher speed motor, put a bigger controller, and just like any other car. But if you've got a resistor system, not the best system to be augmented in any way, really. You should probably just leave things alone and just use the car in stock form. Because if you put a speed motor on a resistor system, then it's going to put even more of a strain on the resistors and they're going to burn out. So. 
It just depends on which car you have. Number eight. William Rizzo, by the way, it's 81 and it feels like 85. It's cold here today, William. Don't be telling me about 80 degrees. It's me and Helpless Garage over here in Arkansas We've got a cold front right now. Number eight's from David. Hi, Tim. I replaced the four batteries in my 2008 precedent. Everything works great except my headlights and taillights are out. I've checked all connections and made sure that I did not cross any wires or place the batteries on any wires. I checked the two fuses in the wire line and even replaced them. I replaced the relay and the dash thinking that might be the issue. Nothing. Is there any advice that you can extend that might lead me to the answer to my dilemma? Thank you. Okay, we're just replacing the batteries in your club car press that shouldn't have had anything to do with your lights. Okay, your lights are running off of 12 volts from somewhere. If it's a 412 volt system in your precedent, they could have been hooked to one of the 12 volt batteries. All right, that's one idea. If they weren't, then you've got a voltage reducer somewhere that's creating 12 volts. So that's where your issue is. If you know you, you, those lights were running off 12 volts from somewhere, like I said, a couple of different ways they could have been running. If you got six eight volt batteries, same thing. You got a voltage reducer somewhere that those lights are running off of. Larry LaCucaracha <laughs> on Facebook. I have a 92 DS resistor and upgraded to Navita system. Plenty of speed and torque. What did you do about the wiring harness there, uh, Larry? And I'm, you upgraded to the Navita AC system. So you, you, you ditched all your resistors is what you're telling me, right? You completely gutted that, right? It's just started with the frame. Am I correct? Just want to wish you and everyone in the room happy Easter. Central air distilled. Uh, that's what I don't know. Uh, help us if the, who said that earlier that they collect the water from the William. It was William Rizzo. Is that considered distilled water? Because it, it's not that water is not produced because of steam, right? That's, I mean, in an air conditioning unit. That's, so that's a good question. I'd like to know the answer to that too. Okay, you did an IQ harness. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you got to switch everything out to an IQ system first, to an IQ harness. Larry LaCucaracha on Facebook with his Navitas AC system. It used to be a resistor DS. That's what I was saying. You don't really want to mess with the resistor system. You don't want to augment that and put any more restraint on that than, than you have to. But if you're going to yank it all out, Put the IQ wiring harness in there and go from there, then absolutely. Yep. You all right, Biggin? Mm -hmm. William says, yes, it is distilled. It's considered distilled. Okay. I didn't know that. Number nine is where we're at on the regular questions. This is from Hank. Is there an easier way to tell if one or more of my five batteries need to be replaced other than taking them out and having them tested at a local parts store? I don't have a means to transport the cart to a shop. Thank you in advance. Of your five batteries, Okay, we need to clear that up first. What, what do you mean five batteries? Golf carts have six batteries usually. Uh, either They either have four or six. Uh, so the five battery thing we need to clear up. But anyway, yes, there's an easier way than doing that. You use a voltmeter and put on each one of your batteries, take some alligator clips, put them on alligator clips onto the leads of the voltmeter, put the alligator clips on one of your batteries and go drive the cart and watch your voltmeter and see if you see anything and do that on all six of your batteries or all four depending on which battery configuration you have and look for a battery that's dropping out more than the rest rich says let's test the central air condensed water for tds that's true because the internet said 
that the TDS needs to be less than five parts per million. And he says, I would bet that it's higher than, than steam distilled. That's a good point. Helpless garage. In the summer, my AC spits out seven to 10 gallons a day. Yeah, well, I wonder how we can, how, I need to look up or figure out how we can test for TDS. How can we do that? And then that would tell us if we are, you know, going down the right path or not. Because if it's, if the TDS is too high, it says uh, it has to be, or, or, or you're going to, well, it, it definitely says only in emergencies anyway, even if it is less than five uh, parts per million. I'm talking about reverse osmosis stuff. That was number nine. Number 10. This is from George. 2002 club car is very slow on the slightest inclines. But do I know if it's time to change the motor or the batteries? I added a bunch of electronics, lights and stereo and amplifier. How can you spread the power so it's sucking juice from the battery? Well, it's not going to be the motor most likely. Motors, they, they don't, that's the thing about golf cart motors. In general, they tend not, electric motors, they tend not to lose power over time. They, they work the same because it's all about magnetic fields and spinning armature and, and magnets and, and wires and, and current and amps. That's all about that. And all that stuff is, is constant. It, that doesn't change. So they, they tend to be the same. They don't tend to lose power over time. Uh, batteries do. So it's more likely going to be batteries, but do go back in this video where I talked about putting a voltmeter on the batteries and seeing what they do under load. Sure, we have a mad scientist watching who could test for us. You probably, we probably do. That's why I, that's why I said that, because I was thinking somebody in the room may know how to be able to test the TDS. Big Mike said less than $2 a gallon, Joe Foster. Where are we at there? We're good. All right. All right, the title of this episode is Can I Trace One Battery? We talked about that. Let me run those social media links again so anybody watching knows that they can follow us on YouTube and Facebook. Like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook if you, if you haven't already. You can follow us on TikTok and Instagram. I'm running the links to those, the other social media platforms for right now. If you would like, oh, by the way, another congratulations to Tina Wilson. Tina Wilson was the latest winner of the hat giveaway. She got a new hat with some little trinkets from Golf Cart Garage. If she hasn't received it yet, then it's on the way. So she was the latest winner. I spoke with her on the phone after last episode when we gave that away. Nice lady. I uh, don't know if she's in the room or not, but congratulations again for Tina. We will give away another hat too, by the way, just not today, but we will. I will announce it beforehand. Galactic Technologies, that is a good question on the reclaim AC water for my first thought would be to boil it first to kill off any airborne bacteria. And I know there is meters you can buy meters to test the TDS. And once, uh, Rock Dog, I once had a saltwater coral tank. There are handheld TDS meters. I used a reverse osmosis with deionized and always had TDS zero. I used it for water changes and top off. Thanks, Golf Cart Rush, for all your shows. Joe Foster. You're welcome, Joe. Paul Fortune. Great show. Thanks as usual. Thank you there, Paul and Joe. Yeah, you never know what we're going to talk about here on the Golf Cart Channel. We ended up talking about reverse osmosis today. So maybe we all learned something, or at least gave me something to look into. Uh, I, I like, uh, I enjoy trying to continue to learn something new every day. All right. Uh, speaking of hats, if you would like to buy a hat from Golf Cart Garage, you can. Where's my hat graphic? Oh, there it is. Bam! There they are. There's hot links in the description that would take you right to them. You can buy one, but we occasionally, like I said, occasionally we give away one. We did last Tuesday. Uh, we'll probably give away one at least every month. We'll, we'll do a, a hat giveaway. 
But you can always go buy one if you can't wait. Okay, we'll do let's see, and then we'll come back to the to the coupon. We'll go come back to the coupon. All right, so let's see some cars before we run long. Let's see. Today's featured carts are from a couple of different people. One of them is from William Rizzo. He is in the village, Florida, so you can imagine what he comes across in the villages. Uh, they lots of creativity going on there with golf carts and so that's why I get he sends me quite a few pictures and they're always interesting so here's one from William Rizzo ready for this BAM <laughs> this is in the parking lot you know this is a random golf cart in the parking lot at the villages I mean you never know what you're gonna see I mean I've, I've shown some pictures from William before that he's had a I think he's he's may have been the one that sent me the Shelby Cobra uh, cart but this 18-wheeler, that looks, that is very intricate. Very intricate bodywork. Uh, that is cool. Even down to the dual rear axle setup. That is pretty cool. All right. Okay. That was William Rizzo. Rizzo. Yeah, that would be, I, I would bet that they don't. That, you know, mechanically, I would think that that would be way overkill project for making both rear axles drive. And it wouldn't be necessary for a show 18-wheeler, you know, golf cart. But I would be interested to know. I would be interested to, to see how that works under there. Sweet looking. All right, we can show it again in a minute. This one is from Chris Bukowski. Chris is, was uh, sent me these pictures. Yeah, the, pro the whole project was definitely way overkill. But if both of those axles drive, that's even going even more so. All right, this is from Chris, and I was interested in it because I don't know what kind of car this is. He didn't tell me. If you're in the room, Chris, tell me what brand of car this is because I pulled out my dealer magazine and I tried to match it up and I couldn't find anything exactly like it so I'm not 100% sure on what the brand is. It's a good looking car uh, but I, I couldn't find an exact match. So I'll leave that up there for a minute or two. Y'all can see if you can identify the brand in case or if, if unless Chris is in the room Larry the Cucaracha, hot links in the description, Larry, take you right to the hats. Not, not any t-shirts yet, Larry. There's no t-shirts yet, but that's not to say that we're not going to get some. I might get some that say does a solenoid click, like Mike said. <laughs> but, uh, see, I'm not seeing that. All right. If if Chris comes back, we'll uh, we'll put that picture back up because I'll be interested to know what. There's so many. I, I mean, I pulled out my dealer magazine, and there's I, I'm seeing there's so many different brands of golf carts out there now that it's a it's crazy. I mean, there's 50, 60 brands. It used to just be Easy Go, Yamaha, and Club Car. I mean, that was it. Now there's there's many and new ones coming out every month you know it seems like in the dealer catalog there's an advertisement for a new golf cart company that's that's looking for dealers all right if you want to buy anything parts from golfcartgarage.com you can use this coupon code you get five percent off any parts you order at Golf Cart Garage, if you use the coupon code TIM19, that's TIM19. This code expires on the April the 4th, 2024. 5% off. TIM19. All right, got that done. If you need to contact Golf Cart Garage for any reason, you can go to golfcartgarage.com. 
Here's an email address, support at golfcartgarage.com, and there's the phone number, 401-2934. You can uh, give us a suggestion if you need us to start doing something or carrying another part or just give us an idea of something we could do differently. We would like to hear it. All right. Well, helpless, you still, you still with me? I wanted to ask you a question. I am in the... On April the 8th, that April the 4th expiration which reminded me, my town where I live, we are in the path of the total eclipse that's coming up. It's called the, uh, it's called the path of totality. And you got people coming from all over the world to see this thing. And they're all going to be coming to the path of totality. And it's, you know, it's a very small path that the, the eclipse is going to go across the United States. But it goes right over where, I'm, where I am at. It's going to be interesting. April the 8th, total eclipse in my area. We're going dark, you know, during the middle of the day is what they say. And it's supposed to, like I said, people, tourists from all over the world are coming here. I was going to, I was going to ask Helpless, is he in the path of totality in, uh, in Cabot? Looks like a Mad Jack's Apex on an RXV. Okay. That might be why, that, that, that makes sense because I don't think there was Majax in my, in my magazine. I don't think that Majax card is in there. It's really cool because it has LED, the, the headlights have LED going completely around all across the front. I mean, it's, it's really neat. <laughs> Rich says he was on a path of totality years ago, but his wife got him through it. Well, I am in the path of totality, is what they call it, for the eclipse. Yep, we, we talked about reverse osmosis today and the path of totality. It's an apex then for sure. Last eclipse in 2017 went over us. The next one isn't until 2040. Well, this one is coming right over everything, it, right, my, my whole circle. My whole circle involves this property, and then we go to the lake all the time. So it's, I mean, we're going to watch it from the lake. Or we're going to be out there on the lake uh, when it goes dark. Mike Irwin says he is in the path here, too. It should be cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. They're, they're already giving, uh, not warnings, they're giving uh, cautions about food and supplies because there's so many people that are coming to, to visit this thing, you know, that aren't. Oh, helpless. What I was asking, did you hear what I asked? I wondered if I wondered if Cabot is in the path of totality for the eclipse. That's what I wanted to know. Let me see. Everything is cool. Oh yeah, remember that if you are considering switching to lithium, the the our eco batteries, our eco-lithium batteries, are still 10% off at Golf Cart Garage. They're already factored in. You, don't, you can't use a coupon code or anything like that. The 10% off is already factored into the price. So if you ever thought about going lithium, now may be the time because they're, they're at a little bit lower price. Obviously, we're going to hear from D-Max, too, on his experiment. Uh, also, if you spend over $2,099 at GolfCartGarage.com, you get a $100 Amazon gift card. You can use it for anything you want. $100 Amazon gift card if you spend over $2,099. And that's not difficult to do nowadays. We're going to, uh, Rob Cedar says we are going to be about 80% dark. Help us. Oh, yes, we're expecting hundreds of thousands in our town. Yep. So you are in the path of totality too in Cabot, because uh, you know it's it's a short, it's a very narrow path. I mean, uh, I don't remember how long the the actual totality path. The, you know, we're talking darkness path. You know, is a very small area. If you look at the and, and like uh, like uh, Rob was saying, he's going to be 80 percent dark. You know, but if you're in the black zone, you're talking about dark. So that's going to be one of the weirdest things ever. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be kind of freaky. They even got t-shirts in our Walmart now. Total Eclipse, April 8th. Okay. That's going to be it, guys. I want to thank everybody for showing up. Thank you for coming. Thank you for helping out in the chat with, with questions. 
Uh, I like the fact that we have a very wide range of experience uh, in different subjects and you never know what we can talk about here. And I appreciate that. I'm going to have to go learn about a, see if I can find a TDS, total dissolved solids meter, and do some experimenting with some water. Yep, I'm in the twilight zone. Kurt. <laughs> Dino Man, you alright? Yep, he's good. He's behind me now. He moved from the golf cart. Alright guys, I will see everybody next Tuesday. Tim Taco Tuesday. If you haven't if you're not subscribed and you don't get the uh, you don't get the notifications. So I will see y'all then. See everyone on two <laughs> on Thursday. Oops, Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Tuesday's only for now. All right, guys, thank you for coming. Like I said, the garage is now closed. <laughs>